The main changes in the field of Eurodynamics are it's not used as often as, as it was 10 years ago. People that tend to go for more symptoms than a physiological uh, measurement, while my belief is that you have to combine both symptoms and physiological uh, data to come to a clinical decision. The basic principles in neurodynamics haven't changed. There are some new catheter types that are coming out of the market that can facilitate the measurement, make it more convenient for the investigator. The machines have very much improved, being much more server-oriented. It's easier to use them. They have standardized protocols. You can't make some mistakes you used to be able to make. In the last 10 years, we didn't see that many changes as we did in the province in the previous 10 years. On the other hand, I think that if we go on in demonstrating the validity of these tests, we will have a good future for this technique. I think the most significant change is, is, is regrettably sometimes the ignorance of your dynamics. I would not be happy if that, that continues. I think we have a good system to have a, an adequate diagnosis uh, in patients with uh, low urinary tract dysfunction and we should not throw away that system uh, because of uh, some, like say, studies that have challenged it and incorrect conclusions throw that away. To really diagnose the condition a patient is in, we still need urodynamics and then relate that to symptomatology and to other non-invasive techniques. Because of uh, budget constraints, we've increasingly been asked to justify the value of performing urodynamics. There's a real cohort of people forming to show its clinical utility, uh, where it could be improved, which cohort we get most information out of, and definitely what's changed is not really the technology, but the way we use it and how motivated we are to publicize when it's useful and when it's perhaps not as useful. I think urodynamics are, are absolutely necessary and valuable because they are the only measurement or diagnostics that give us detailed information about the true function of the loneal tract or its dysfunction. So to understand the pattern mechanism behind the symptoms of the patient because that is what we at the end want to understand. It enables us to uh, identify persons at higher risk for uh, future damage of lower tract or even upper urinary tract and it helps us to um, monitor um, the treatment that we apply to the patient. I'm mainly interested in functional and neurourology and within that I'm interested in underactive bladder because it's rather new. My personal view is that both under and overactive bladder both have to do very much with sensation of the bladder. It was really a good workshop. There were a lot of uh, questions, a lot of enthusiasm, and new uh, people uh, uh, who are interested in uh, becoming experts in neurodynamics, a lot of young people. So I think that uh, the take home message is that the interest is still high and that we are doing and we are going in the right uh, direction to uh, have uh, neurodynamics as an important tool for the future. Eurodynamics will be necessary and will stay necessary as well. The landscape, um, I hope, should change in the direction that we can do really Eurodynamics um, in a more ambulatory way. I think um, 10 years from now it will be not only user-friendly but also much more patient-friendly. I hope that we then have ways of doing more things wireless so that the patient can be in one room and the investigator and the nurses be in another room. So that it is more like a home feeling where you go to a normal private toilet. The film may change in, in sure better selection in patients that need and require better quality urodynamics and better guidelines for every case situation.
Increasingly, we're seeing more options of how to measure pressure more reliably, uh, more options of perhaps measuring electrophysiology, both within the bladder as well as external sphincter, more integrated approach in terms of how we use imaging in terms of our urodynamic diagnosis. So the more understanding we have around all of those uh, almost adjunct investigations, the better our diagnosis will be. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting time to be a urinamicist.